Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> um, carry the two. Push the cosine button on your center calculator. No, I'm at ten. Ten. <laughs> Welcome back. What's all that about? A podcast where two cheeky chaps chat candidly about stuff. My name is Kelso, one of the aforementioned cheeky chaps. And with me, as always, is my dear longtime mate, Amish admirer and co-host Kerwin. G'day, Kerwin. Kelso, my old friend, thank you for that sterling introduction. And may I say a million welcomes to you, sir. Thank you very much. You have made me so welcome. I'm going to uh, peel the sticker off your computer that you've left on. <laughs> what, where, where do you fall on that camp? Uh, are you a, pe- a sticker peeler offer? And I'm talking about, you know, any type of uh, goods. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Especially, you know, like when you buy a new watch or a new thing and it has that little screen protector. I love taking that off. Yeah. Is that what you mean? Well, that's a that's a different category altogether. Well, actually... I, I guess what I'm getting at is, is, is people can be divided into different classes. There's people who would indeed leave on that protective film. That's even a different category than the labels. And uh, you know you know what I'm talking I know, about, this, right? Yeah, sociopaths. Yeah, I'm well aware of them. <laughs> people that leave, no, you've got to take that off. You know, Because that, that's equivalent to having your your couches or your, you know, your lounge suite covered in plastic, plastic which I yeah. understand uh, a certain demographics are fond of. People that live of. in Long Island or something, of, 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 <laughs> that's what I, from what I've heard. Yeah. Now, dear listener, if you happen to be a Long Islander, uh, tweet in a photograph of your protected couch item, <laughs> protected <laughs> lounging wear. <laughs> Yeah, so the, 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 the different variations, you're quite right. People who don't even remove protective films, like packaging film, would you call that? Yeah, yeah, I guess like when you get a new phone or a new watch, you know, they just, you know, to stop the, the brand new thing from getting scratched in transit, I guess. But, yeah, uh, yeah I enjoy that, taking that off. But what stickers do yeah. you mean? Well, the next level is, let's say you get a computer and it says, uh, you know, it's got Intel inside, but that's w- with a little sticker that's actually on the on the appliance. Yes. Or, you know, you get a fridge and it says uh, this has got like four out of five economy rating stars. That's the next level. Do you, do you leave those on or do you remove those? Well, Kelsa, you bringing this up, yeah, I think you've made me take a real moment of self-reflection here. Uh, I think I might be half-half. Um, yeah, it depends on the appliance. It does. I think uh, when it comes to, I think you know what it comes. I think it comes down to the quality of the sticker. If it's one of those paper stickers that, when you, in the act of peeling it off, the top rips off, but the sticky part stays on, it's like a, a big mess. So maybe it's maybe my my uh, I'm. I'm Sort of dictated to by the quality of the sticker itself, but uh, how, how does one go about testing the quality of the sticker without peeling it? Oh, it you, do, you do that thing, right? you approach it very quietly and carefully, <laughs> and you just 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 tease the corner away just to see what we're working with here. You don't want to scare it, you yeah. know. You much, start- much like my date dating method. <laughs> yeah, you don't want to startle it. You just you just pick away at the corner yeah. and see what you're dealing with, and uh, if it's a, a bit troublesome, then you just leave it alone. You just walk away. But uh, some and of them are really and you whack, straight off in the corner. Yeah, yeah. Next thing you know, you're back at your place, and uh... <laughs> <laughs> you you stole my uh, follow up joke. I was going to say much about my dating life, but uh... <laughs> well, we're on the same page. But I'll tell you what I won't do. I'll tell you what I won't do. I'm not, I'm, I'm not sure where I stand in the whole stickers thing uh, to peel it off. But I'll tell you what I won't do, Kelso. And that's I won't put stickers on anything. Oh, right. Okay. I understand where you're coming from. Like guitars, for Reverse example. Reverse direction. Yeah. Dear listener may know I yeah. play guitar. And I am definitely in the no stickers on my guitars camp. I used to be when I was a kid. Because uh, everyone did. But then um, I'm like, no, I'm not. I'm not going to ruin what? this precision instrument that someone has worked, you know, to get this finish on this beautiful guitar, and I'm going to, like, put a sticker on it? Yeah, nah. Uh, I think it's tacky. 
Most stickers are tacky. That's how they stick on. Have you ever put a sticker on something like, I don't know, your computer or your your guitar? No, I I think the only thing that brings springs to mind is I did put a small Australian flag sticker on my bicycle when I went touring through Germany. <laughs> <laughs> did you get a lot of waves? Quite the same. A lot of people beating yeah, their yeah. horn? Kelso! <laughs> Kelso of the podcast. <laughs> and use him. I can tell by the saddlebags. Um, why don't they go back to their own country? That's what I, I would, have, would have heard in uh, in German. Yeah, Aussies coming here, taking your jobs. What? Uh, so if I looked at your guitar case now, no no stickers, not even like a Marshall sticker. What, what's the coolest sticker you could have on your um, guitar case? Well, there isn't one. Uh no, no, I, I maybe some of my old guitars that I don't use that are in storage may have a sticker on them. Actually, I think one of them had, uh, I, I thought it was like a picture of a dragon. Turned out it was the uh, the alternate Scottish flag. You know, the yellow background and the red uh, griffin, yes. or was it a griffin or a, a dragon? Um, Who knows? I only, <clears throat> the deer... Uh, listener in based in Scotland, <laughs> tweeting us let us know. But I know exactly. I can picture what you're talking about. Yeah, on a on a sable field or something like that. Yeah. Yeah, it was given to me my by my my sister's Scottish boyfriend, and I thought, cool, a dragon. I'll put it on my guitar. I didn't realise it was Scottish flag, but that was probably the last time I. I um, for me, it's like one uh, shade above or below, depending how you look at it. Graffiti. You know, it's sort of like a. Yeah. It's a very gentle defacement of something, you know. Yeah, which you're not into unless it's advertising the phone number of Jenny. <laughs> what is it? Eight six seven five three zero oh, nine. 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 Jenna, exactly. Jenna. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Top shelf. Now, of course, that you've got a, another classification as well, which I'm sure, dear listener, is well aware of is uh, the next level is those people that uh, don't remove the labels from their clothing. Where do you stand on, on that? What code? labels? Which labels do you mean? Because like, when I buy a shirt, like it's got like a, a whole bunch of stuff dangling off it. Okay. No, I mean, <laughs> not the... Uh, yeah, good point, good point. That could have caused some confusion. <laughs> I am confused. I, I, I don't mean the little tag inside the, the collar at the back that tells you uh, absolutely, definitely not to wash it in warm water. <laughs> But I mean, <laughs> but wasn't there a fashion fashion at the, at some point to leave the actual like price tag on? I'm oh, the tag like on! The dang, oh yeah, yeah, like the uh, daggling. Yeah, I think was, it, was that a thing? Is it, that is that still a thing? I think it was like in Fresh Prince of Bel Air time. <laughs> um, but I do know That's, that like in in a similar kind of thing, like with cool guys that wear cool hats, there was a, a thing there. I don't, maybe it still is a thing about. Uh, maybe even as long ago as 10 years, but uh, it was certainly five years ago, you'd buy one of those cool baseball caps and there'd be like well, a golden a sticker more, on more the brim. The, that's, that's exactly what I was thinking of. <clears throat> but they, they weren't quite baseball caps, were they? I mean, they're in that shape, but they're a little bit more, um, like, I'm going to say larger with a flatter brim, maybe. Yeah, or they maybe are that's larger, what a baseball, yeah. Well, we grew maybe that's what a baseball cap looks like before... You fold it. It is. No, like, that's exactly what it is. Like We grew up in the era, this is showing our age, we grew up in the era where if you bought a baseball cap, you wanted to curve that brim. These days, right. you don't want to curve that brim at all. Um, you're basically you know, letting the world know you've got a, a, uh, you're a grandpa. You're approaching, <laughs> you're approaching 50. I better take, a, a, better take a note here that uh, folding the cap right out. Because remember, there's a brand. I don't know, just dear listeners, you should know we are, are not sponsored by the store, but there was a brand of baseball caps called Starter Caps. Remember that the Starter okay. Cap? That was the brand. And and the ads you just to, in the ad would show you how to fold the brim to the perfect thing. You take That's it, right. you squeeze it, you fold it. You know. Yeah, these days, you you don't touch it, you don't fold it, you leave the sticker on, maybe you leave the price tag on. I don't know. But, I understand uh, some people iron it. <laughs> I mean, if I give it a bit, a bit of starch, to make it extra, yeah. get out the spirit level, make the sure shops. it's perfectly flat. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. 
<laughs> you see guys in the shops of the spirit level, like I said, holding up to the light, checking the <laughs> the sheen. <laughs> Have you noticed that also some of these sort of flat brim hat wearers, they tuck their ears inside the cap? That was never something that, that was not the done thing in our, our era, you know. Right. Have you, you, Is that you because the hat's got slightly, slightly bigger somehow, hasn't it? I think they have gotten bigger. Yeah, and um, well, maybe it's a bit, they're being sun safe, <laughs> stopping their, <laughs> their little ears from getting uh, skin cancers yeah. and stuff. So yeah. Anyway, no, I'm I'm sure we've talked about this before, but do you remember being uh, as a kid? Um, you know the New York hanky, <laughs> hanky. <laughs> You know, there probably is a New York you New York Hanky company which um New is York. Parallel, owned by the same people who run Kath Kitson. Right. It's New York. I'm sorry, I'm yeah. stuck on Hey, I'm sneezing here. You know. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Look my microphone there. Sorry, dear listener. Right in the air. Um <laughs> No, you get a uh, three-for-one uh, membership when you sign up for Kath Kitson, the Yankee, uh, the New York Candle Company. It's called the New York Candles anyway, and um, the, yeah, the New York Hanky. The New York Yankees, the famous um, <laughs> baseball organization, not related to Kath Kitson, but um, the the symbol they would have on their, their baseball caps back in the day. Uh, I remember being absolutely... I had no idea what that symbol was, and I think it was some sort of Chinese script... But it was everywhere, and I was absolutely fascinated with it. Yeah. No, I did not know that. Well, can, ah, can you describe it? I think maybe... The, what? The New York Yankee baseball s- symbol? Oh, you mean the N and the Y thing. Sorry. I, I'm sorry. Yeah. I it. Okay. Yeah. Right. So you know how they're over overlaid. As a kid, I see... Because I think I used to watch a show called McCastle and McCormick. Hardcastle and McCormick. Hardcastle right? and McCormick. Wow. Okay. It, it was like a... <laughs> <laughs> Jeez, Kelso, where did you get that from? Oh, yeah. uh, it was a show, or maybe it was Jake and the Fat Man. I can't remember one of the two. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah, we're talking uh, post Starsky and Hutch, uh, but early, you know, in the era. So, yeah. uh, cop body mo- buddy movies, and one of those characters definitely always wore a uh, a blue traditional New York Yankees baseball cap with that symbol on the front. Uh, but I had, of course, being some Australian kid from. Um, uh, rural Queensland. I had no idea that was the symbol for the New York Yankees, and I thought it was some sort of Chinese symbol. I was just absolutely mesmerised by it. Could it have been what that, is that that you thought it was a Chinese symbol? I mean, this is like uh, I, I'm going to sort of get into your brain here with a, you know, let's, let's see if I can pop the lid and see check check out what's happening under the hood. Do, do you remember that the little Chinese kid from Indiana Jones used to wear a? Uh, Oh. A New York Yankees cap. Short stack. Ma- short stack. So maybe <laughs> you looked at him wearing that thinking that, you know, that that thing was, you know, that maybe that fed into you thinking that that emblem was, was a Chinese character. Ah. Do, do you think when George Lucas was writing the script for Indiana Jones, he just wrote down short stack as a placeholder for that character's name and then never came back and fixed it? I'll just call him short stack. <laughs> Uh, it works. It works, though. It was, certainly does. I'd love to you do know, an impersonation of him, but we can't do that anymore. I used to do an excellent. <laughs> I used to do an excellent short stack. So dealers will just have to imagine, because I'm not going to do it. <laughs> imagine that in your own mind, dear listener, and um, imagine Kerwin getting cancelled. <laughs> well, we had a good run. What's weird is you can still impersonate Michael Jackson, so that's still that. I'm not, I'm not going to do that either, though, but I'm just saying that uh, people still do that. <laughs> I believe that's a grey area. <laughs> Hello, dear listener. Roselle, the intern here. So, the name of the kid from Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom is called Short Round, not Short Stack. No sticker for you guys, sorry. Anyway, on with the show. Kerwin, Kerwin, you never believe who was waiting outside the Watt offices this morning. It's our lovely intern, Roselle. She came back. I didn't think she'd be back after last week, but... uh, Mm. 
there she was waiting. So fantastic to see you, Roselle. It's been an absolute treat to have you on board. She seems keen. Might be. <laughs> she does seem keen, which uh, I can't put my finger on it. Well, at least she told me not to. Uh, yeah, exactly. Um, Definitely she made it very clear we are not allowed to put our finger on it. So, um, dear listener, you might not be surprised that to hear that our intern, uh, Roselle, has given me another link to read. So if you're ready, uh, let's have a look. Let's have a little look. A Kansas man, a Kansas man, it's hard to say, a Kansas man has asked an Iowa judge, what's he doing in Iowa? How far away is Can- are, they, are they next door? Uh, I so, don't know. I don't think gonna... they're too far apart. I'm going to say two... Two state max. Uh, the, yeah, this how, looks how like does one... we need to follow up on, Kelso. Oh. I, I need <laughs> look. I need to know why an Iowa man is doing in Kansas, it, or, or the reverse, or the other way around. Yeah, reverse. exactly. It doesn't even matter. The same question applies. Well, I mean, because isn't there a thing about crossing state lines? I'm thinking about this. You know, obviously well, exactly. that maybe oh, he crossed state ma- lines. With, uh, maybe that's why he wound up in court. So. Maybe, yeah, maybe I'm getting ahead of it. So I'm assuming you're okay. googling a map of the United States. I did, did a quick mash in the background, dear listener. Now, do they show a common a common border? That's uh, what, that's what I need to know for this for this story to really gel in my mind. <laughs> Pop. <laughs> right. Okay. Well, the interesting news is they do not share a border. Oh, oh it gets curiouser and curiouser. <laughs> <laughs> However, they're very <laughs> close to each other. Like a state in between or... Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, imagine um, a square divided into four. <laughs> I'm painting a picture here. Right, okay, yeah. Square divided into four. A square divided into four so that all four squares touch each other at the intersection, yeah? Yep. And then if you just shifted two squares on the right up a little bit... You've got Iowa and Missouri, and then on the left you've got Nebraska and Kansas. Now, Kansas and Iowa in the opposite corners no longer touch each other, but they're very close. So what I'm saying is um, this chap could have made his way from Kansas to Iowa, or indeed from Iowa to Kansas, by going through Nebraska or Missouri, or both, but only for a very short trip. So they're close, but they're not touching tips. That's right, but they're very close. Okay, yeah. very close. So okay. Anyway, cool, we've cool, st- cool. established that. Good to know. Cool, okay. cool, cool. So, Kansas man. A Kansas man has asked an Iowa judge to let him engage in a sword fight with his ex-wife <laughs> and, her att- and her attorney in a trial by combat that will settle their ongoing legal dispute. Now, that seems personally reasonable. <laughs> uh, all right. So, yeah. so, like, so is, it's his husband and wife? Yeah, or? his ex-wife. And a, and a lawyer is involved as well. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, so he's actually, from the re- reading of this first sentence, which I'll read it again, he wants to engage in a sword fight with his ex-wife and her attorney. So he, he's made it clear. <laughs> it's not... No, it's a two-on-one on sword you, fight. Is that what he's saying? He probably, I'll take you both on at the same time. He fancies himself as a bit of a bladesman. Uh, <laughs> yeah. While you studied the law, I studied the blade. <laughs> So, uh, which is why, Your Honour, I want to really insist on the sword fight. Right. Okay. I've been studying the law. Uh, so, yeah, that's a bold move, Cotton. Let's see if it works out. Um, he must be really pissed, though. Pissed as in drunk, pissed or annoyed? To well, either might, way, probably have, both. I would say. You know, might have how he got into uh, trouble in the first place. So uh, this chap, I won't read his name, um, said in the court filing that his former wife and her attorney had destroyed him legally. (laughs) (laughs) So uh, now, can you, uh, dear listen, I'd love you to picture the court scene where this uh, chap stands up in front of the judge. I'm, I'm assuming he's representing himself, Kerwin, that makes sense to you? Yes, and I'm assuming he's in full... A military uh, garb. Uh. <laughs> he's got. He's got. He, I, I'm almost certain he's a katana uh, enthusiast. K- let's call it. Katana. Okay. <laughs> so now it's a ninja or, sword fight, not like <laughs> well, a, not not like a fencing duel or something like that. Well, no. presumably he wants to stack the the odds in his favour. Um, <laughs> 
Now, I, I, I must say, dear listener, I don't know anything about katanas other than um, if you have one, you in the internet will immediately assume that you're a, you're one of those milady gentlemen, perhaps. Is that right? Does that I make sense? don't know what that means. Milady gentlemen? Milady. You know those, uh, the internet meme of like kind of a an overweight chap who's wearing a fedora and uh, doesn't quite know how to relate to ladies and oh, perhaps reads a right. few too many uh, uh, magma, manga comics. Right, and yes. And will tip his hat and say, milady, that's the... <laughs> right, okay. Now, I will, full and full disclosure, and Kerwin will back me up, I'm pretty sure that um, in my earlier days, I, I could have been known as one of these chaps. Uh, as a, I think I would have become a, a milady man. Oh, uh, no, no. No? On. No, no. Okay. Give yourself some credit, Kelso. Well, no, you were Just not trying to make dear man. listener feel better about himself. Well, but although I will <laughs> say this, you were milady adjacent, um, but you weren't, you weren't in the club. You weren't a card-carrying milady guy. <laughs> but I, I can see I why just... you thought you might have been. Let, I'll just say that. I was... I was as close to being a milady guy as um, Kansas is to Iowa. <laughs> <laughs> not quite, not quite adjacent, but the I only... could get from one state to the other with a short trip through <laughs> Nebraska or Missouri. I was, was going to say the only thing stopping you being a lady, a milady guy, was a little bit of Nebraska. <laughs> Just a tiny, a little bit got the way. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. Okay, so. So he seems to be basing, well, basing his claim on the, the the fact that his wife and his her attorney has destroyed him legally, and as we were imagining him standing up in front of the court, putting his fingers underneath his um, his uh, suspenders, no doubt, <laughs> making his case. <laughs> the judge had the power to let the parties resolve our disputes on the field of battle legally so okay so this t takes a bit of describing J the judge had the power to let the parties and then what follows is a quote from our uh, sword bearing hero the judge had the power to let the parties in quotes resolve our disputes on the field of battle legally end quotes said our hero uh, adding in his filing that trial by combat once again quotes Adding in this following that trial by combat, combat has never been explicitly banned or restricted as a right in these United States. Oh, loophole. In quotes. He's going to have a loophole. Oh, oh. Good. Good and loophole. also, I think he's impressing the judge and the jury by using the phrase, in these United States. That's He's <laughs> That's definitely it. heard that in a movie. I do like that. Yeah. <laughs> That's real Gregory Peck stuff. That's right. That really does have a nice ring to it, that, doesn't yeah. it? In these United States. Well, why is that the case, do you think, Kerwin? Well, it's not... Why does uh, that well, it's, sound right? I don't know. It does, it does sound like some kind of uh, movie from the 50s. Mm. And you go, yes, it is these United States. I tell you what, this podcast doesn't have another host who resides in this United Kingdom... Yeah, it doesn't no, have the same ring when you... Yeah. No. Yeah. Anyway, so that's his anyway. argument. Um, uh, the so judge... The, did the judge is okay the, with this. Is that what you're saying? The judge... No, no. This is what our hero is arguing. He says the judge... Oh. He could resolve our dispute. And it's never been banned or restricted as a right in these United States. <laughs> I arrest my case. Your Honor, I say Your Honor. No, sorry. That's, that's the South. That's, <laughs> that's uh, He's from... We're in, the, we're in the wrong part of the United States. Well, he's State. from Kansas, so he's... Uh, we, yeah, so he, he's part, putting though. forward the case that because it's not illegal to settle the differences with a sword fight, that he wanted the judge to grant um, yeah. uh, permission saying, to yeah. take the sword to his ex-wife and her lawyer. Well, I'm assuming he's willing to let the ex-wife and, indeed, her lawyer also have a sword, but we haven't got to that part. <laughs> let, let's find out. Choose your weapon. <laughs> Choose your weapon. <laughs> uh, okay. Now, the next part actually is informative here because it says, uh, he, our hero, also asked the judge for 12 weeks' time so he could secure Japanese samurai swords. He didn't even have them ready to go. <laughs> he hasn't put it through. Uh, 
Now, it did say plural samurai swords. Weeks time, so we could secure Japanese samurai swords. So presumably he's actually, if he's bending over backwards here. How can the judge say no? Because he's saying, not only will I um, obviously bring my own sword, I'll bring swords for the other chaps. Well, that's very, that yeah. is very considerate of him, isn't it? You know. Well, yeah. So he needs the tw- could- so say twelve weeks is the time he needed. That's how much he needs. That must be the uh, order time from the, Japan. The, yeah, I was going to say the Japanese Amazon. Like, how many samurai swords would you like? You know, just click, yeah. click, click three. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I suggest he order them from ACME because as Wiley Coyote demonstrated, <laughs> you can get them there that afternoon. <laughs> and any range of uh, any range really? of goods you might need. I was going to say, if he's going to order it from those guys, just get some dynamite, like... <laughs> <laughs> now, let's say... Let's just put our uh, put ourselves in the ex-wife's shoes. Let's say she uh, wanted to counter-argue this. How, what, what form of combat might you suggest if you were the aggrieved lady? Um, uh, fingernails or... Um, <laughs> is that sexist? <laughs> <laughs> well, ju- ju- judging what I uh, I know from the uh, what, what I've ga- garnered so far from the the plaintiff, I would say that the lady uh, probably has little to do with this gentleman uh, as much as possible. <laughs> I would say she's moved at least uh, even more states away from from <laughs> Iowa uh, or Kansas. Yeah. Um, what well, are you suggesting? Might have moved into Indiana. I think she might have moved out of those United States of America. <laughs> completely, completely. My lady. <laughs> She's probably got moved to Japan to get some like ninja training or something. You know? uh, <laughs> so was it was there is there a uh, a happy ending? Let's see. So um uh, the reason they're in court is uh Visitation issues, custody, of course, property tax payments, and... Um, Visitation, as in they have children. I'm assuming so, yeah. And this guy's like, exactly. we're going to, like, it's going to be a fight to the death with swords. Well, uh, that's how sorry, they got into court. Sorry, kids. Uh, look, good. Look, I've got some good news and some bad news. <laughs> the good news is I'll be seeing you every weekend. The bad news is here's the head of your mother. <laughs> 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 what? And, oh, oh, and her lawyer. I could not believe it. Yeah. The article goes on to conclude the attorney argued in his legal response that because a duel could end in death, such ramifications likely outweigh those of property tax and custody issues. <laughs> One of the finest legal minds in America there. <laughs> That's why he's a judge and we're not. <laughs> and now to, to cap it off um, which you know ex- unbelievably great uh, display of skill from this judge he said that uh, he won't be issuing a decision anytime soon citing the irregularities with both sides motions and responses <laughs> so he's, he's kicked it into the long grass <laughs> Oh, the Senate to a higher court. I like that. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Objection! Well, buckle my swashes. That was a strange one, guys. I hope you two have never crossed swords. Kelso, I've uh, received another urgent email from uh, Roselle uh, with another important news article that must be read out loud by you and I. And right, she's doing a great job. She's doing a fantastic job. A new intern. She's uh, worth every cent that we're not paying her. That's right. <laughs> it, uh, okay, so this is it. I'm going to read it. This is what's been sent to me. A man was accused of butt-dialing a friend while having sex with his dog. But Well, hang on. Uh, raises well, a few questions. <laughs> How can you? I'm sorry that uh, that first line was very spicy. Do, should I should I read it again, just in case I didn't I read so. the wrong thing? Okay, yeah, Rose, I'm starting to um, lose rapidly lose faith in this whole intern thing. Uh, a man was accused well, it, it, explicitly in Roselle. Well, look, I mean, we're not paying her, so. Oh. 
Okay, anyway. A man was accused of butt-dialing a friend while having sex with his dog. Right. So, okay. what springs to mind is what position were they in? <laughs> oh. You get one guess. <laughs> <laughs> Well, the thing is, okay. any position Re- with a dog is doggy style, isn't jackhammer? it? jackhammer? <laughs> <laughs> Good point. <laughs> I mean, That's I know doggy style. The, the dog's That's doggy style. Uh, yeah, exactly. The dog's like, yeah, you guys call it missionary, but, you know, it's, it's so still does doggy that mean style. The ca- one of the, does that mean that one of the world's shortest books is the canine <laughs> Kama Sutra? <laughs> it's a pamphlet. <laughs> It's a sticker, pretty much. Actually, in retrospect, they'd still have to show all the different positions. This is disgusting, dear listener. I do apologize. It, it is. No, we're just, we're just <laughs> all fleshing, the different positions. Fleshing this out. But, You're right. Um, but still, underneath each um, diagram and instructions, it'd just be called doggy, doggy style. style. So it'd be the same length. Each and every one. Um, <laughs> yeah. Maybe it would be doggy style hyphen reverse lotus. <laughs> Well, here's the other thing. I mean, if you really want to get down into the weeds, I, I don't, I'm not sure if a dog is able to um, mix it up as much as humans are with positions. You know what I mean? <laughs> yes. I, okay. mean, I, don't, I, don't, I mean, I don't want to, you know... <laughs> I don't want to get bogged down in detail here, but I, I do feel like that a human-on-dog uh, situation, you don't have a range of... You know what I mean? It's not like, you know, you've done it too many times. You know, let's just mix it up. Let's just, you know, maybe, you know, anyway. Um, sh- sh- shall I go you, on? You, you raise a salient point. Yeah, should I, should I go on? Well, no, no, my point is we have, I'd like to establish <laughs> what position they were in. Because if he's going to butt dial someone, right, what, was, was his phone still in his trousers or was he hitting a phone accidentally? And if so, how would that be possible? Well, look, I mean, I, I get, okay, fine, we're going to do this, Kel. So we are going to <laughs> <laughs> we're going to get forensic. Um, uh, I'm assuming that picture a dog, and you're a guy oh. that wants to have sex with that dog. You're going to enter that dog in actual doggy style from behind. I'm assuming, you know, right? Why so where's the, the phone? Dog? In his pocket. What, has he just got his trousers pulled down? Uh, Half mask. So well, uh, okay, I see what you're saying. So maybe you're saying he's sitting, the man is sitting, and his phone is yeah. in his back pocket. That's what I mean, doggy style, dash, reverse lotus. No. <laughs> <laughs> maybe maybe I'm being too, uh, <laughs> too uh, paying too much attention to the uh, normal culture here, but perhaps maybe butt doll just means... Um, just, his, his phone dog. is accidentally called. But you're probably right, you know. Yeah. Um, look, we don't know the breed of this dog. Maybe it is one of the sexy ones. <laughs> <laughs> the more, What's an unsexy the more, dog? The, the more sexually it matches. <laughs> well, I would imagine, like, your bulldogs are no fun. But, you know, the Afghans, <laughs> they seem like a real mix Could to me. You know, they're going to, you know, sway their to hair. Experiment. And, yeah, exactly, yeah. They're not too bright, from what I hear as well. The Afghan. Apparently, the Afghan is the dumbest dog. So, um, Fair so well, I'll go, I'll, I should, I'll go on, but maybe the, I think the, some details will be re- revealed after that. Like I said, very, very white hot first line of this article. Um, as I said, I'm going to read it again. A man was accused of butt dialing a friend while having sex with his dog. <laughs> okay, next line. I think this next part's going to reveal a lot, Kelso. When I tell you that ex carnival worker Russell, fifty four. <laughs> <laughs> now that's really um, uh, objection, Your Honour. Leading the witness. Look, I mean, sir, there's so much in just the ex carnival worker Russell, fifty four. Let's start with the ex carnival worker. <laughs> Look, how much of a reprobate do you need to be to be get like? Yeah, the, the carnies no longer want you in their in their <laughs> company. Um, and is what is one ever truly ever an ex carnival worker? <laughs> yeah, Can you leave the carnival? Exactly, you know exactly. You, you, you think you're out that they suck you back in. <laughs> um, That's right. Uh, so here we go. This is 
<laughs> right. I think we're getting into some of the uh, the nitty gritty here. So, ex carnival worker Russell, fifty four, was arrested after he accidentally called a friend while allegedly engaging in a sex act with his German shepherd. Okay, so there we go. It's a Whoa. German shepherd. Well, the you know okay. the Germans are pretty <laughs> spicy when it comes to that. So that may, that's, that's things are starting to add up here. Um, uh, yeah, okay, sex act with a German shepherd. So they, that's all. Okay, fair enough. All right, okay. Police well, I say... Think so, k- k- sorry. Doggy Kelsey. style is probably still the most likely uh, position, then, I think we'd say. I Maybe like imagine. a crouch doggy style. The crouching. <laughs> <laughs> Which I believe is called the jackhammer. Uh, cr- crouching dog <laughs> hidden carny. <laughs> crouching dog ex carny. <laughs> I believe when you try to leave the carnival, they say no pass outs. You realise there's no pass outs. <laughs> oh my god. Um, okay, so the police uh, say this is the next bit. Police say the act of bestiality was called mm-hmm. on voicemail when no one answered the phone. So hang right. on, how, how does bestiality get caught on a voicemail? I well, think that, that that I would love to have been in court when that was played for the jury. Because <laughs> um, you, you have to it has to be clear um, clear evidence that a respons- reasonable person would conclude that the sounds they were listening to were evidence of bestiality. Look, I want to recreate it, but I, not even <laughs> I am game enough to try and. Uh, <laughs> But I, I see where you're coming from because if he was just grunting and ooing and maybe the occasional bark or a, or more likely an occasional growl um, from the dog, uh, does that prove bestiality? Exactly. Or, or... He may have just been relieving himself in the presence of his dog, which I believe is a very common thing um, for people that live by themselves. Um, yeah. Well, you know, if, if, if you happen to be in the couch and enjoying some Pornhub and the dog walks and you're not going to tell dog them to, to like, oh, don't at look at me. I'm, oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> they don't know what's going so, on. Perhaps the, perhaps the gentleman in question um, actually said what was happening, uh, you know, a bit of a, a dirty talk to the Alsatian. Oh, I've been a... <laughs> explicitly saying, oh, yes, you love it. Don't you, this bestiality which I'm performing on you at this very moment. <laughs> oh no, the phone! <laughs> it's like, whoa, 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 Sheba, that's too much teeth. <laughs> Bad dog. <laughs> Bad dog. <laughs> oh, yeah, okay, so anyway, so here's a quote from the sheriff. It's obvious there is a condition there. It's just abnormal no matter how you look at it. Right. I think he'd be right in saying that. Um, Mm. Yeah, so the man, the perpetrator, who lives in a town... This is the name of the town. Phil Campbell. (laughs) That doesn't sound right. There's a town in Alabama called Phil Campbell. Let's... We could do a whole... like That should be a story just on its own. That there's a town <laughs> named after just some dude. Um, Is it two words? It's two words. Phil Campbell, exactly how it sounds. Um, there's a town in Alabama called Phil Campbell. Wow. Uh, maybe we can ask Roselle to look into that. Yeah. So Russell, who lives in Phil Campbell, not to you know that's that's <laughs> um, he will be the second person charged under the state's new tougher bestiality law. <laughs> We had to make them tougher. <laughs> <laughs> the old ones two lax like... around here for too long. Yeah, it used to be like, oh, you can have sex with a dog you want, but we don't recommend it. Um, so obviously they needed to <laughs> yeah. tighten. I know we've been the... saying man's best friend, but there's a limit. Yeah, apparently you do need to be told. Um, <laughs> but here's where it gets really interesting, if it wasn't before. Um if convicted, he will be required to register as a sex offender. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God! Look up your dogs. Here comes Russell. 
<laughs> I was going to say, whenever a dog goes missing, the cops are going to be around questioning him again. Where yeah. were you last Friday night? Yeah, sometimes you see a dog, someone take over their dog and it's walking funny. And like, Russell! <laughs> <laughs> He's done it again. He's done this guy. <laughs> someone get him a girlfriend. But, but seriously, don't. Um, so anyway, so the, uh, the sheriff goes on to say, it's scary that it's had to go on more than... Sorry, I'll read it again. The uh, the sheriff went on. He says, It's scary that it's had to go on more than we know for them to make it a law. <laughs> I think he's hit the nail on the head there, the uh, officer. Oliver. His name was Sheriff Oliver. Uh, yeah. He's like, call, c- calling out the legislators saying, What is going on here? It's basically come to this. Um, so Look, the good are news we going to have to get Phil Campbell involved, <laughs> the the founder of this town, <laughs> or the uh, the good people of Phil Campbell to rally uh, around this cause? Um, but the good news is, Kelso, is that bestiality in Phil Campbell, Alabama, is now a class A misdemeanor. Thank goodness, at last. About time, you know. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, um, yeah. Dear listener, if you happen to be an Alsatian, you can rest in ease. Well, um, well, unfortunately, um, some there's some further details. Uh, Russell, who, is, who I'm, I, I don't want, won't read out his full name because you know, I don't want to ruin his reputation. Um, <laughs> uh, Russell has reportedly admitted to sexual relations with his dog on four occasions. Has he admitted to it four times, or he's admitted to having sex with his dog four times? Well, it gets worse. <laughs> he also reportedly owns a chihuahua as well, <laughs> but only engaged in sexual relations with his German Shepherd, say police. Thank, thank goodness. <laughs> like they, well, they, they had the the chihuahua in one of those like rooms at the police station, and they had a little <laughs> chihuahua doll. Show me on the doll where the bad man touched you. <laughs> In his defence, the man said the chihuahua was purely for kissing. <laughs> oh, okay, so the district attorney, county district attorney Joey Rushing, said that he will file a motion to show allegations of sexual motivation in court. If he had proven he had sexual motivation in the charges of BCLE, Myers would have to register as a, as a sex offender. So there you go. Um, uh, there you yeah. go. Yeah. So he's the first person charged. Uh, so sorry, he's the second person to be charged under this law. Guess what? There's a first person. Do you want to know about this guy, <laughs> real quick? Sure. I mean, <laughs> I think poor old Russell is uh, just the tip of the iceberg from the look of this article. Um, right. <laughs> I mean, I think things are about to get blow wide open here. Um, <laughs> the first person charged under the new law. Well, I'll, uh, Jonathan, I'll say, 39, of Geneva, allegedly had sex with his wife's two-year-old Shih Tzu. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. Oh. <laughs> Where's that? Uh, woo. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. Um, uh, but it gets worse. Uh, Jonathan felt that uh, his wife was paying more attention to the dog than him. <laughs> So, so, I'll know what I'll seduce the Shih Tzu. Don't look at that. Yeah. <laughs> so he put his shit through the Shih Tzu. That doesn't make any sense. <laughs> We're getting back to Russell. Getting back to yeah, Russell, Russell. Uh, the hero of the story. Uh, he was also charged <laughs> with possession of marijuana or possession of drug paraphernalia. Oh, that you know, fair enough. Myers reportedly worked for years with various traveling carnivals. It is unclear what exactly what his role was in the carnivals. <laughs> I'm going to say it was the dog fucking. <laughs> it was in charge. Very of popular. Very much. Yeah, that was a very popular rush sideshow. He was originally from Chicago, but moved to Franklin County three or four years ago. Myers was reportedly living in a shed without electricity when he was arrested. <laughs> and oh, then the. The article, very thoughtfully, includes a photo of the German Shepherd, and uh, it has a broken look on her face. 
They haven't blurred out the uh, identification, so I can't mm-hmm. identify the German Shepherd. It's a, it does say, the unnamed dog, who is female, we'll, we'll give him that, <laughs> is said to be recovering. <laughs> <laughs> and did not want to speak to media. Um, yeah, it has been taken care of by the Franklin County Animal Control. She is going to be examined by a veterinarian. Okay. Um, I'm surprised he did go for the uh, German Shepherd over the Chihuahua because uh, you can get a lot of outfits for a Chihuahua. <laughs> and uh, you know, you do some role play. <laughs> well, I mean, uh, he's obviously a freak. Why not? Um, <laughs> so, just to wrap it up, Kelso. For any lo- uh, dear listener who may be an animal lover, we there is a happy <laughs> ending. That the bond was ordered at six thousand um, dollars, and if Russell pays out, he has also been ordered to not have any more contact with animals. So there you go, a happy ending. Thank goodness. How much is that dog in the window? On behalf of Cohen and Kelso, apologies to dog lovers, carnival workers, Germans, Mexicans, and the good people of Phil Campbell, whoever or wherever that is. I do hope that dog is for sale. Kerwin, you will never believe, but... Uh... Moro on Twitter is trying to squeeze in on the internship action. Uh, well, well, result. well, that's interesting. Who, what's his name? Moro. Moro. Is it? Oh, no, I'm I have no idea. Uh, got to us. Got in touch with us on Twitter, as you can, dear listener. Podcast K A K. If you want to squeeze in on Roselle's sweet intern action and apply to be a, a virtual intern. So uh, Moro has uh, tweeted in, and he's uh, sent me through this article. Beachgoers. Beachgoers, uh, and, uh, That's me. Well, that's us. We're beachgoers. <laughs> We've been to a beach. Yeah, once or twice. Beachgoers in Northern California have been stunned by the sight of what looks like thousands of disembodied penises washing up on the shoreline. <laughs> That doesn't that doesn't sound sorry, pleasant. Let, sorry, so take, take me back to the scene. And what, where is this happening again? <laughs> Beachgoers so in Northern California. Northern California. Ah, have been stunned by the sight of what looks like thousands of disembodied penises washing up on the shoreline. Now, are they sure they just weren't at a, um, a nudist beach populated by the older gent? And uh, the older, smaller, perhaps a little person gent? What, and all their penises and that- suddenly became detached and... No, they were actually uh, full human bodies, but they looked like disembodied penises lying <laughs> on the shore. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just spitballing here, dear listener. Turn, 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 yeah, look, yeah there's, there's, no, there's no bad ideas in a brainstorm. <laughs> there's no bad ideas in a disembodied penis storm either, by the sounds of it. <laughs> dear me. Um, now, Northern California, that, that's when you're starting to... Uh, you know, way north of San Francisco, um, San Francisco, it's getting a little bit chillier up there because I think when you and I think of California beaches, we're thinking of uh, Southern California, Venice Beach. Yeah, that's right. Mm-hmm. Which uh, always confused me because that's not in Venice. Anyway, yeah, yeah. Uh, Back a to recent storm. <laughs> to back to the penises. Uh, a recent storm, uh, so we're out north of San Francisco, a recent storm uncovered a mass of worms from their burrows deep under the sand. The creatures which are known as... <laughs> the creatures which are known as fat innkeeper worms. <laughs> now, I find this particularly ironic because I refer to my penis... As a fat innkeeper. <laughs> Can I get... uh, haven't you referred to me a couple of times as a fat innkeeper when you've been jolly mad with me? Look, I'm, well, I'm sure like a couple of your lady friends have asked your uh, penis for lodgings and a hot meal. <laughs> and I've had, often had to say, I've only got room in the barn. <laughs> Uh, wow, yes. fat yeah. innkeeper. That's fat the best thing I've read worm. all day. Thank you, Morrow. Hey, okay. <laughs> can can you, you just... It, it, has the article supplied you with a picture? What, what is a fat innkeeper worm? Uh, not like? really. No, no. Well, there's a photo from afar. Okay. Now, do you do you think that Morrow... Um, actually, I was going to say, 
I'm pretty sure we went to school with a kid called Morrow who was a bit of a fat in- innkeeper. I think he was. Maybe it's the same guy. Um. Uh, anyway, the creatures known as fat... I'm, I'm not going to be able to get past this. Fat innkeeper worms <laughs> were soon dubbed penis fish <laughs> due to their phallic characteristics and distinctive colouring. Distinctive colouring. Well, that's that's racist. That that's is racist. That is. Yes, that is racist. Because they're uh, very in the photograph, very obviously pink. Well, now, yes. we all, you know, there's different coloured um, penis fish, I will point out. Dear me. Um, anyway, fat innkeeper worms or penis fish. <laughs> A.K.A. penis fish. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm going to, we're going to have to, I'm going to have to Google. Do you mind if we just do a quick uh, yeah, Google give it a shot. Okay, it, okay sorry, called? you, if you do click through, there is a, um, there is, uh, there is a better. There is a, actually a much better photograph. The second photograph. So, what's it called? The fat uh, innkeeper uh, fish. Or just, uh, uh, what was I, it I again? Don't know. I don't know. <laughs> just search for penis fish, California um, beach. No, maybe. I'm going to do the other one. I'm not putting penis fish <laughs> into my. <laughs> you don't want that coming back. I again. don't want that. Oh. No. <laughs> what's it called? The, in- <laughs> the innkeeper. What's it called? Fat innkeeper, California <laughs> beach. Innkeeper fish, right? Worm. No, no, no it was fat, a worm. Ju- yeah, Here we go. Fat, <laughs> it's come up. There's a whole bunch of things. This must be a thing. Okay. <laughs> it's the uh, the scientific name, the Eurekus unisinctus. Oh, my goodness. And you're right. The fat innkeeper worm or penis fish. Now, let's see a picture. I've got to go to an image. I haven't seen one yet. Here we go. Oh, yeah, yeah. That. Yep, that's a cock. I'm, I'm looking at one where someone's holding them in their in a hand, and it's like it it seriously looks exactly like a penis. Like a penis, yeah. <laughs> I think that's what they were even with for. the little foreskin. And uh, this one's got one ball bag. I mean, it's only got one, but it's still. I'm looking at a photo of a walrus eating one, and oh, <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> Is it uh, quite the sight that might t- make Russell uh, change his prefer- predilection to, <laughs> from dogs to to um, walruses? Yeah, yeah no, Russell, put sense. down that German shepherd. You should get yourself to uh, Northern California. Now, at, uh, now that you've yeah. been banned from um, having dogs. Uh, anyway, um, <laughs> this photograph I'm looking at is disturbingly... Uh, Realistic. Yeah. Wow, my goodness. I expected it to look something like a, a penis, but that looks exactly like a penis. Well, at least the one that I've got. <laughs> and it's dis- distinctive colouring. Yeah. Um, look, yeah, well, now I, uh, look, I'm, I have to admit I'm uh, strangely beguiled by the uh, <laughs> the fat and keeper worm, a.k.a. penis fish. Um, I'm seeing a lot of photos where there's, like, giant... Tubs of them. Uh, they obviously right. travel in packs from the looks of uh, this. I have described... One of my female friends once described uh, Tinder as an ocean of cock, but um, yes. now, I, now I know yeah. what that looks like. Um, okay. Now, do you think when the scientist who discovered these was, uh, you know, lodging the claim as you do to uh, register the name that they'll become used by... He was actually going to call it something uh, more risque, related to the penis. And his wife said, uh, "I, I think we sh- you should call it the fat innkeeper, which is, after all, how I refer to your private parts." <laughs> It'll be our a little inside joke. I thought it was like, "Do be reasonable." <laughs> the fat innkeeper worm. Thing oh. is, I can't really see the innkeeper there. You know? Wow. Um, May. Well, I would say that the uh, scientist who discovered these, or the naturist, if we assume it was in the 1800s, um, was familiar with the penis of a fat innkeeper. Yeah, I can imagine that the the first discovery when they said, you know what this looks exactly like? And the guy, the other people around are going, yeah, yeah. This looks exactly like a fat innkeeper. Uh, That's not what I was going to say. Yeah, sure. Mm -hmm. Uh, Okay. We thought it looked like a fat penis. (laughs) 
<laughs> this conversation was happening in the local inn, and the three people yelled out in unison, a fat innkeeper's penis, and we switched to the innkeeper behind the bar goes, mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, oh, dear. Right, here dear. we go. Okay. Uh, it's a... So, so this is a um, lots of them washed up. Is that what you're saying? Like not just because um, I'm looking at singular penis fishes. Um, so you're saying there was a whole like I'm, beach full I'm of look, them or something? Uh, yeah, I'm looking at a wide angle, and that seems to be thousands. Oh, oh. wide angle. Yeah. <laughs> 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 uh, okay, so here's a quote from a biologist. Yes, <laughs> please. Physical design. Yes, <laughs> the physical design of the fat innkeeper worm has some explaining to do. <laughs> he didn't actually probably write it with that intonation, but like Ricky said, Ricardo, yeah. yes, uh, yeah, yeah, yes. The physical design of the fat innkeeper worm has something, some explaining to do, but whether or not you feel privileged by its presence. The worm is almost uniquely California is almost a uniquely California experience. Perhaps having the best claim for state worm. Well, why not? Yeah, let's face it. There's lots of useless dicks running around Hollywood. So why not? Uh... <laughs> Wait, is that still the quote from the biologist, or is this you now? I got... <laughs> no, I'm editor- editorialising. <laughs> I was going to say it was seamless. Yeah. <laughs> okay. It was okay. No, very good. Um, well, I mean, so as far yeah, as I understand, most of the uh, fat innkeepers I've seen on celluloid have originated from uh, California. Right. <laughs> Maybe yeah. a few more from Prague recently, but uh, primarily from that source. I, I'm seeing an innkeeper worm, a uh, fat innkeeper worm. Should uh, keep it to mm. its, its actual thing. That looks. It's actually kind of. If you scroll down, I guess when you when you Google search that they they pr- put all the penis looking ones up up top first. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But if you scroll down, it starts to get a little bit more varied. Um, yes. <laughs> and well, don't forget that penis is a wide and varied um, appendage. So. Yeah, I'm looking at a plate of penis fishes that look like really badly made sausages. <laughs> that somewhat describes uh, my local sauna. Do, <laughs> do they have a face? Have they got no personality? No, yeah, exactly. I mean, is there? Oh, oh my God, they do. They have. No, they don't. No, it's just a little, just like a penis. That's probably what it is. It's just a little slit. That's all it is. A little hole. That's what we need. <laughs> now the biologist went on to say. Uh, his, the biologist who measured the worms as 10 inches or 25 centimetres, sounds about right from my yeah. experience. <laughs> if you're lucky. Uh, the biologist who measured the worms as 10 inches and described them as pulsing said they were perfectly shaped to burrow underground. Pulsing. Oh, come on. Come yeah. on, mate. It, it sounds like he was really trying to avoid the, using the word throbbing. The thing. <laughs> Bolting, but perfectly shaped to borrow, 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 borrow <laughs> underground. Come on. Now, do you think that this was, that was the actual wording of the, the journalist that said, oh, I'm going to have fucking fun with this? Oh, I, I know. I think both the journalist and the biologist were, uh, you know, there, there must be a marine biologist out there when they must get a call, what, once or twice a year to talk about the penis fish. And they're like, all right, I know what you guys want. And, you know. And they use all the euphemisms. Um, <laughs> oh, I would. I now, would. If I was a marine <laughs> biologist and I got the call about penis fish, I think I'm, I would deliver. I'm going to have fun with this. Time to make my... <laughs> to, try to make my name in this field. All these guys fucking laughing at me. I'll show them. <laughs> penis worms? I thought there was something fishy about that article. Get it? Dickfish? Anyway, next. Kerwin, I have just found out that Roselle has got extremely pointy um, elbows. Uh, she squeezed her way back in and insisted that I read uh, this article. Dear listener, 
hold on to your seats. Does that make sense? Hold on to your seats? Sit hats. on the edge of your seats. Yeah. Hold on to your hats. Seat, yeah. yeah, hang and on your hands. Uh, you paid for the whole seat, dear listener, by um, downloading this podcast, but you only need the edge, is what Kerwin <laughs> likes to say. <laughs> Two West Australian pig farmers. Well, uh, that tells us a lot already. Okay. Um, uh, <laughs> please tell me they're not about to have sex with these pigs. <laughs> I'm afraid it does involve semen. Uh, Two uh, West... <laughs> Two West Australian pig farmers involved in the smuggling of Danish pig semen hidden in shampoo bottles have been jailed. Okay, all right. <laughs> it's always the first sentence that needs a lot of like breaking yeah. down for me to. Yeah. I need to ingest Get your it head properly. Around. So, so two Aussies. Two, two, Aussie guys. two pig farmers. Yep. Two, two pig Aussie farmers. farmers. All right. Yeah. <laughs> Got that. Right. No, just. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> I thought I'd just uh, play along their characters in the background. Two Aussie pig farmers, g'day, g'day, uh, were involved in the smuggling of Danish pig semen. Oink! That's a pig, a Danish pig. It sounds strange because it's Danish. Involved in the smuggling of Danish pig semen, hidden in shampoo bottles, have been jailed. Cling. Oh, okay. All right. So they're they're smuggling, <laughs> smuggling now, Danish pig semen in semen. or out of the. They're smuggling it in. I'm going the to assume it in into uh, Australia. So the question, dear listener, and I ask you, Kerwin, is why would they do this? Why would they want Danish pig semen? Yes. I want to say that Danish pigs are really tasty. <laughs> That's right. Is that what it uh, is? Almost certainly. Well, we're going to find out, I suppose. Okay, but yeah. I, I, um, I thought I'd try to stump you. No, I, I, I you know, what else, uh, you know, do pigs <laughs> do but be eaten? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so, um, so this chap, this farm, has been sentenced to three years in prison, and the other chap two years after pleading guilty to multiple charges of aiding the illegal importation of pig semen. Over several years, they didn't just do it once. <laughs> oh <my. laughs> There's a kind of racket going on here. Out of all the stories, this one has got me. I got to <laughs> Yeah? <laughs> this is so dumb. Yeah. So... <laughs> <laughs> okay, sorry, keep going. Well, at least this uh, farmer's wife knew when he was going overseas on a business trip. He wasn't going overseas <laughs> for international pussy. <laughs> he was going over for international uh, semen. <laughs> Don't worry, love, I'll bring some back. Oh. This is golden. Right. Uh, aren't, you, aren't you worried about your husband going on these international trips? <laughs> he always All comes back t- with plenty of shampoo. <laughs> Do not get them mixed up again. Uh, my hair was limp and lifeless until I got pig semen. <laughs> Oh dear. Okay, so apparently, you, yeah. you, I don't know if you knew this, uh, Kel. So that that's what uh, you know what the what Dan- the Danish word for pig semen is. Mm-hmm. Pantene. <laughs> that makes a lot of sense now. That makes that exactly what it is. It does uh, explain why I've been uh, getting all this head and shoulders dandruff, though, <laughs> as well at the same time. <laughs> God. Oh, okay, so. <laughs> I've got so many questions, but do do go on. Okay. Um, uh, the the farmers arranged for semen collected from Danish <laughs> boars and smuggled. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> I've met a few Danish boars in my life. I can tell you. <laughs> uh, the accent is fun for a while, but after a while. Um, <laughs> They arranged for the semen collected from Danish borns and smuggled into Australia in passenger luggage, obviously to be used for artificial insemination. So that at least we got that uh, uh, cleared out. 
uh, in the uh, comically named, the name of their farm was the Pinjara Piggery. Right. Now that rolls off the tongue nicely, doesn't it? Pinjara Piggery. Yeah. That actually sounds like a um, Harry Potter character. Uh, Pinjara Piggery. <laughs> yeah. yeah. One of the Hufflepuff students or, or, or it could be a spell. Harry's. You know, a spell I'm doing like... a bit here I'm doing a bit <laughs> you're doing a bit sorry <laughs> actually a bit you're quite right. right that is a much better spell <laughs> but I was going to say one of the Hufflepuff <laughs> students who was in Harry's potions class Pinjara Piggery Pinjara Piggery right <laughs> yeah, but it also reads quite nicely um uh, Harry approached Voldemort and yelled at the top of his voice Pinjara Piggery <laughs> Or to be honest, that sounds more like a a um. I can't think of his name now. The bloody uh, the the ginger, the sidekick. The ginger. What's his name? Um, Terence. No, uh, <laughs> Terence. Bugalugs. <laughs> no, you know the guy. Ron, 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 Ron Weasley. Ron Weasley. Sounds like a a Ron. Something Ron would say. Pinjari Piggery. Pinjari yes, Piggery. Okay. At least, at least Fred and George. Um. So, Kelso, okay. I've, I've, I've been losing it for, like, the last three minutes here. Take me back to where, where I'm completely just been dying over here. So, they they smuggled it back from in a Danish... Shampoo. Yeah. Yeah, in shampoo bottles. Yeah. Yeah, I think the Danes are uh, internationally famous for quality bacon, yes. So, they wanted to get a bit of that action over here. Presumably, the Australian uh, legislation was against their uh, interests, so they figured the best way to uh, get around the rules, surely, is the old Pantene bottle. But doesn't, like, semen, I mean, as of what I know, it doesn't have to be kept at a certain temperature. How did they do that in their suitcases? In mm. They just... Uh, man... man. Do they fill it? I mean, that's a lot of pig juice. <laughs> yeah, well, that's if, a you go, lot. if you go, if you're going to do something illegally and smuggle something into a country, you, you are going to bring a lot. Let's face it. Um, <laughs> perhaps, but your question is as to the temperature at which pig semen needs to be held during uh, international transportation. Perhaps <laughs> pig semen is the cockroach semen of the world, where you can't really kill it. So it's no problem. Whack it, in a, whack it in a shampoo bottle, put it in the hold of a... It's, <laughs> it's nature's sturdiest semen. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Especially the Danish stock. That's why the bacon is so good. Exactly. <laughs> semen can't be killed. You can't like, hold it, to keep it down. So, all right, I feel I don't want to get ahead of the re- the reveal here, but yeah. I feel like... Uh, I, I'm not sure there is a reveal. I think that's pretty much it. The only thing I will say is that it? the... Well, How the lawyer... picked up? Like, <laughs> okay, let's find out. Um, no, there's a note here. The, no, the note here to say that there, the farmer's lawyer was a bit slippery because he said um, the lawyer said his actions—that is, his client, the farmer—the law, lawyer said his actions were stupid, and as sole proprietor of the business, he had been the front man of a grand scheme carried out by Danish investors. He's blaming it all on the Danes. This poor Australian farmer is a pawn in this international scheme. I think it's what he's saying here. Bloody Danes. How Danes. dare they? You know, this simple Western Australian farmer. He doesn't know what he's doing. He doesn't know the difference between Pantene and... He was a Patsy. He's a Patsy. He doesn't know the difference between Pantene and Danish semen, as his wife can... Uh, as his wife can... Uh, evidence. <laughs> I was like, love, your hair looks amazing, but it stinks. You know, okay, um, well. Yes, well, that is, wow, okay. <laughs> well, let's I, let's I, see I, if I'm, they, I'm they tell us, let's see if they answer your question here, they, how they actually detect yeah, it. Yeah, how they get detained. Uh, like, uh, can I have a guess? Uh, I want to say, you know, like, you know, the, these days when you're, uh, you're traveling because of all, you know, the terrorism concerns. Is that, uh, you know, things in, uh, you know, shampoo bottles, they want to know, you know, is it some kind of explosive? And maybe they did a quick test on it, went, uh, <laughs> Hang yeah, on this, is, uh, this isn't C4, but I'll tell you what it is, Danish pig semen. <laughs> Let's see what happens if we say this over it. Pinjara piggery. Yes. <laughs> I knew it. <laughs> now, there's a note here that... Um, 
the exact details of how the uh, contraband material was detected has been protected by the Commonwealth Division of the Biosecurity and Quarantine Division. So as to not to reveal their uh, methods and sources. Maybe they had one of those uh, um, pig <laughs> semen sniffing dogs, you know. The, the, the As a specialist one. Yeah. There's like a little basset hound that's uh, trained specifically for uh, picking up pig semen. Contraband pig semen. Um. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> now, to round it off, um, the, the chief executive of the, um, the industry uh, described the whole... Uh, illegal importation scheme as a shocking violation of trust. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely shocking. <laughs> oh, that is that's my favourite for today, Kelso. That is uh, that's. I I think I have more questions than answers at the end of that article, but st- <laughs> still. Oh. I like to think when the farmers walked into the court and out of the court. The uh, the burghers of the town were gathered round and pointing at them. Shame, shame. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was so funny. That was ridiculous. Oh my god. I just couldn't get uh, the the vision of a two was it two giant shampoo bottles full of pig cum out of my mind. I try. I tried to move on from that in my mind. I tried to oh, ask we, proper we, questions. We, <laughs> no, that was great. I, I couldn't get there. All I could think of was just the farmer's the, wife squeezing pig juice <laughs> onto her head in well, the shower. We missed the obvious joke, though, of uh, do you realise how difficult it is to get a pig to ejaculate into a shampoo bottle? <laughs> Filthy, disgusting, dirty pigs. Of course, I'm talking about Cohen and Kelso. Oink. Cohen, Cohen, Rizal has pointed out to me that based on the proximity of Kansas to Iowa, it's mm-hmm. time to stop this show. Uh, and by the proximity of Kansas to Iowa, I mean the two states are actually getting closer to each other every year by uh, a centimetre, as it turns out. The shifts <laughs> really <are good>. <laughs> And <laughs> Great the, news. The amount that they've moved is, uh, indicates to me it's time to stop the show now, dear listener. If you don't have time to become a, a virtual intern and squeeze in on some of Rosella's action... Perhaps you'd like to participate in What's All That About by suggesting a, a showstopper. And a showstopper is what, Cohen? Well, it's a song that we do at the end of our show to stop the show. Mm. Um, oh, and dear listener, I didn't tell you. Tweet us in, podcast KAK, that's how you get involved. And podcast KAK at gmail.com is also how you can step on Roselle's toes. We've had some uh, wonderful suggestions of news articles to read out, but uh, also if you want to include in there, maybe you should uh, throw in a little song idea. Um, Indeed. How, and it just makes our life a little easier. But uh, today, I feel like today's episode, Kelso, was a little bit ejaculate heavy. Am I right in saying that? <laughs> I think it was. It was. So, And, and we don't back away from that. No. So, uh, not at all. In fact, Lean sometimes in. I use it to uh, as substitute for hair gel in my hair, uh, much like, <laughs> much it, like that's what, uh, it's what keeps your flowing mane so luscious. Much like Ben Stiller and something about Mary. <laughs> yeah. Well, it was uh, it was Cameron Diaz, wasn't it? It was. Oh, she, yeah, she was the one was, who. It was Ben Stiller's she, ejaculate, as you so uh, yeah. correctly said. And it was her hair that got uh, Vidal Sassooned. Uh, <laughs> so soon. Okay. <laughs> so ejaculate. How was ejaculation well, ejaculate. going? How is ejaculate going to stop this show? How are we getting from there to... Yeah. Um, well, I guess our, our last uh, little story uh, uh, that... Uh, pig to semen. do with the, the Danish... Yeah, the pig semen thing. 
Like I was really struggling, Kelso, to think of a song that was sort of attached to any of the stories we had today, but read out tonight. But um, I feel like this song may go some way to uh, provide a little bit of connective tissue to Danish pig semen. <laughs> so, longbow, but stay with me. Here we go. Understood. I you think. see that the best song about pig semen ever written. I think ah. definitely in the now, top ten. Now, is are you suggesting that's what the um, the Danish criminals were whispering into those uh, pigs' balls' ears yeah. when they were relax. trying? Relax, relax, little piggy. <laughs> <laughs> or perhaps do the. Um, the uh, it refers to uh, when the pig farmer's wife was washing her hair, who was pop popped up and whispered that through the shower curtain <laughs> to her. Somehow, does that does that make sense? It does make a lot of sense somehow. Um, it, it, oh God. I'm just I'm gonna I'm just I'm gonna I'm gonna spend the next week dealing with the uh, the pig semen fallout, um, <laughs> much like the pig farmer's wife. <laughs> now, <laughs> now it does indicate uh, to you, dear listener, if you are in fact um, married to a pig farmer, uh, do yeah do question everything they're doing overseas and what they are indeed bringing back, because uh, you never know when it might land you in court. Objection! <laughs> <laughs> That's all very well, Kerwin, but that does leave our dear listener with one question. Indeed it does, Kelso. What's, What's all, all that about? about? So we'll chat to you on the next episode. And don't forget, you can tweet us with any of your story ideas uh, on Podcast KAK on Twitter. And also email us at podcastkak at gmail.com. Thank you very much indeed for uh, listening to our podcast. It really does mean a lot. And if you have a friend, uh, whether they be a fat innkeeper or not, do <laughs> let them know as that's how we hope to grow this very show and if you've got time and you're not investigating the effect or the detrimental effect of pig semen on your hair then give us a sweet five star review on your podcatcher of choice till next time hooroo see you later <laughs>